This video was brought to you by the wonderful people on screen here who support me over at Patreon. If you want to support this channel and what I do, then please check the link in the description or the link at the end of the video. What's up guys? So my channel doesn't cover anything controversial whatsoever. And as a result, we're going to talk about trans athletes in sports. So I've been receiving a number of requests to weigh in on this particular topic, and my position might surprise some, and it will probably also come as no surprise to most everybody else. But first, let's go ahead and get into the fan art. We have a Yu-Gi-Oh! inspired Cirrus by Aura Echoes. We have what looks to be a Higo face from me from Bumbling Bee. And then of course we have Mr. Atheist behind me doing Lord knows what by Disco Scown. Thank you all for the fan art submissions, and let's get right into things. So, this seems to be an issue that has divided the atheist community for some reason. Probably because the only thing keeping most of us together is the fact that we don't believe in a god, even though my channel has tons of people who are pagans and Christians who watch it as well. So yeah, all that weirdness out of the way, I've heard people go back and forth on the science of the issue, the ethics of the issue, and my channel's not a place to talk about the drama. I think that that dilutes the the whole problem. So let's go ahead and lay out some ground rules first. First off, trans women are women and trans men are men. Whether you consider a particular trans person passing enough is none of your business. It's theirs. Whether you think that they're doing enough to pass is also none of your business. You don't know their personal circumstances, nor do they owe you them. This is the same thought process that I had when I made my first video about Pokemon, wherein I compared the knowledge of Pokemon and the community surrounding them to the trans community, and how we have no issue remembering that a Bulbasaur is now an Ivysaur, but for some reason people hold issue whenever Tim becomes Martha. So not only are their pronouns and their name a matter of respect, but every other courtesy you would afford them, even if you don't think they are trans enough, should be afforded. And this extends to sports as well. Which brings up the other problem, the science. Now I've heard a number of arguments on both sides about how HRT negatively affects a person, and thus any physiological advantages they may have once had are offset by the HRT, and then arguments from the side opposite opposite that claim that the advantages are still plenty enough to cause problem, and even some nuanced positions that acquiesce and admit that there are some instances where trans athletes have an advantage due to their physiology, and some instances where they don't. But what I really see here is a lot of people talking past each other on what should be the actual issue. If we're going to hold the stance, as I do, that trans women are women and trans men are men and this is immutable, and that there is A, no benefit to denying this in society, and B, no negative to just giving people their pronouns, then to be consistent with that we can't make a special pleading case for sports. But sports are naturally an arena where we want to have fairness even if it is artificially imposed. So what do we do? Well, maybe this is just the fact that I'm a gamer and I spent my entire time growing up playing competitive card games and video games that it just never really occurred to me that gendered sports made any sense. It does happen to be that there are more competitive males currently in games like League of Legends, StarCraft, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, etc., but there's never a part where women or anyone else in between are denied the ability to compete based solely on their gender. To which the obvious rebuttal is that, of course, because physiology doesn't play as much of a role in those particular competitions, it doesn't make any sense to gender them. But I honestly think that this is just a sidestep of the issue, because if the argument is that physiology is the problem, then that is what we actually should be separating these sports into. If I can, I'd like to propose something called the protected and open classes of competition. Classically, women's sports were created as a protected class because otherwise sports were truthfully male-dominated. This is the whole reason that we have women's sports in the first place, to have, an, to have a protected class of competition that women can compete in. This is why people get so riled up over women's sports, or at least it's the only reason I can see them getting riled up over it. But if we want to argue about the various physiological factors that cause these distinctions and the need for a protected class, then just go ahead and have a protected and open class of competition. If your body meets the criteria to be an open competition, then you go there, male, female, cis, trans, or otherwise. 
If your body meets the criteria for protected sports, then you would compete there. Again, male, female, cis, trans, or otherwise. If these physiological distinctions are so important that we need to have a protected class, then go ahead and make that protected class based on those physiological distinctions. This would keep the protected class concept and keep its utility, but it would stop dividing it on the archaic notion that these biological factors are strictly gendered. Remove the arbitrary middleman of gender completely. In fact, this distinction already exists in competitive esports and card games tournaments. League of Legends segregates people based on their elo, Yu-Gi-Oh! segregates players based on their age, Magic the Gathering segregates its players based on what type of competition they want to enter, be it a standard competition or a legacy one, and that's because these distinctions can actually be measured. They aren't just nebulous like gender. We even already have this idea in certain sports like boxing, where people are generally segmented into weight classes. As long as we're able to create a small variety of protected classes that people can compete in, there's no need to have these segmented by gender. Create a criteria of physiological factors that are important for these distinctions, and then create classes based on those criteria. As an example, me and my partner Rez have an incredibly similar body build and weight. We've also done sword practicing and sparring with one another multiple times, and we can end up being on even footing, with the only differentiating factor being skill and practice. Were we to be selected to be on a competitive team, I would think that we should both be put into the same category, seeing as practically everything, physiological between the two of us is identical. To which the rebuttal to this seems to be that there are things that are inherent to the two sexes that cause these physiological divides. And my answer to that is divide the competitions by those physiological factors and those alone, if they are truly the ones that cause the real advantages and disadvantages. If the camp that thinks that trans women have many advantages over cis women, and therefore should not be able to compete on the same league as them, are to remain consistent in their stance, then this is a solution that would have to be accepted. Reason being, the argument has moved to the physiological differences, and if that's the thing we need to be dividing things between, then we divide them between that and simply skip the middlemen of gender. If the argument continues to stay on gender after that point, then the argument was never about physiological differences to begin with, thus demonstrating the problem with their position. And if the argument is that the physiological differences will divide these people by their genders anyway, then functionally, nothing has actually changed then, has it? we would still have teams that are divided the exact same way, just with the gender middleman cut out. The benefit of this is that even if there are advantages that a trans woman would have over a cis woman in a particular sport, it wouldn't matter because a trans woman would not have to compete as a man, since competing as a man isn't a concept that could even be considered in this framework. So while people argue back and forth about the physiological differences in the science, the answer is to just divide these sports by those physiological differences. If that is truly what this argument boils down to, then this solution allows both trans men and trans women, and anyone of any other gender, to compete as their identified gender, because their gender wouldn't be part of the conversation whatsoever. It would simply be a thing that exists not even tangential to the competition at hand. Much like how the gender of a particular player in a card game tournament or a League of Legends match has little to nothing to do with the actual competition at hand. This is a position that should also be able to be accepted by those who are vehemently advocating for trans women to be able to compete in women's sports, because this removes women's sports as a concept completely. Since the problem from that camp seems to be the revocation of the identity of the trans individual, in trying to come to some facsimile of fair play. If you think that this isn't an ideal solution to the actual problem at hand, then please let me know in the comment section below. I know this was a short video, but I wanted to make sure that this particular topic wasn't too much for somebody to digest. I'm tired of this topic, most of you are probably tired of this topic, and the people who aren't tired of this topic seem to be thriving on drama. Drama doesn't get us anywhere. Solutions do. Now, the obvious secondary problem is that even if this is the correct solution, I literally have no power to implement it. Nor, as far as I know, does anyone in my audience, or practically any audience, of anyone who's been involved in this conversation. But still, the conversation's being had, and there's my two cents on it. Now, anytime that I see somebody try to link me on Twitter to try to rope me into this conversation, I'm just gonna link them this video. Let trans women and trans men compete as their genders. The idea of gendered sports is completely archaic and has no place in the modern world. 
If you're going to have this argument about biology, then go ahead and make the actual divides about biology. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and leave a like and share it with your friends. Can't wait to see you all on Monday's live stream, and I may do a video game live stream at some point today. Anywho, insert into video tagline here.